scenarios are another one of the ways that we can get Excel to help us with what if questions. If you've already watched my video on financial functions, you'll understand what this function FV is all about. If you haven't watched it, it doesn't matter. Although we are using this function, you don't have to understand it in detail to understand scenarios because we can do scenarios on any kind of calculation. The data I've got on the screen is looking at investing some money. What it's saying is if we make a deposit of £500 with a bank and the bank gives us 6% interest return and we make a further 10 payments of £200 each, how much money will we have at the end of our 10 month investment period? And that's the answer down there. That's as much as you need to know. We've got this situation where we're asking how much money we'll have after 10 months. But wait a minute, what happens if I actually want to invest over 12 months? Then obviously with a spreadsheet, we could change this number 10 to 12. And if you just observe the result of the function, when I click to accept the 12, my total goes up. I'll have more money left at the end. I want to compare that to the previous answer to 10 payments. Oh, I can't remember what it was. It doesn't matter. I'll go back and change that to 10. Okay, so if I have 10 payments, 2,581. Oh, wait a minute. What was 12 again? Can't remember. And that's the problem with just changing the values in the spreadsheet. What a scenario does is allows us to build up a range of numbers to view. First thing we need to do is select the tools menu and drop down to scenarios. Now, because when we actually create a scenario and view the scenario, it changes these numbers, it's always a good idea to set up the first scenario that uses these numbers. So that's what we're going to do first. Uh, and it says, choose add to add a scenario. So we click the add button. We give this scenario a name. And then it wants us to tell it which cells we want to make changes to. Now, you can make changes to lots of cells. I'm going to keep it nice and simple and just say we're only going to make changes to the number of payment cell. So I'm going to put A2 inside this cell. We then click OK. This dialog box then asks us, OK, what's the new value? Now, it's picked up the contents of the cell as it is. And I, because this is our starting levels, that's got 10 in there. That's fine. I want to keep it at 10. So I then click on OK. And there's our first scenario. Let's create another scenario with a different number of payments. We click Add. Give the scenario a name. Try and make those names descriptive. Which cell are we going to change? We've still got A2 in there. That's fine. That's the cell we're going to change. Click on OK. What's the new value? Well, I want to change that to 20 payments. So I change this number to 20. Click on OK. You can see then I've got two scenarios. Let's just add one more. Add. Let's call this 30 payments. Changing cell A2. That's fine. Click on OK. The new value for this then will be 30 payments. And then we click OK. Incidentally, that Add button just allows you to add a new scenario rather than going back to the beginning each time. So we click on OK. There's our three scenarios. Now then, let's see how this works. We've built up the scenarios. Let's see the effects that have when we do this. Let's select 20 payments. If you watch what happens when I click the Show button, what's going to happen is it'll replace this number 10 with the values from the 20 payments scenario. And that will automatically update our value for returns. So 20 payments, click on show. And you can now see the 20 has been put in cell A2. And the result of the function has been increased. Which says if I make 20 payments, I'll end up with a lot more money. How much money will I have if I make 30 payments? Well, I can click on 30 payments, click on show. And I then got £7,000. Can I remember what it was for 10 payments? Let's go back and have a look at the starting levels. Select starting levels, click on show, and there's my values back. Now, the beauty of this is, if I close this dialog box down, 
those scenarios are there, they're built into the spreadsheet. So I can now do tools and scenarios anytime and it will bring up those scenarios. And I can quickly look at hmm, how much will I get for 30 payments? Click on show and there's my answer. While I've got the dialog box open, notice we can delete scenarios from here and we can also edit scenarios. So if I've made an error putting one of these figures in, I can go back to it and select it, click on edit and just go through the process to make those changes. What is also useful is the summary button. What summary does, it takes the values from all these scenarios and creates a new worksheet with a summary table of results. Let's have a, have a look. We click summary. It asks us which cell has got the formula in and it's automatically picked up cell A8. That's correct. That's the change that we're looking for. We're substituting these values from the scenarios into this calculation. If it doesn't pick it up correctly, just make sure it's got it in this box. We then click OK. Oh. I'm creating a summary report. Um, we could create a pivot table out of it, but so we'll click on OK. Created a brand new worksheet called Scenario Summary. And there's our summary. And it just summarizes the scenarios. It's got the name of the scenarios, starting levels, 20 payments, 30 payments. It's showing the updated figures and it's showing the updated results. It's a quick way of looking at the changes that could happen. So I'm just going to delete those scenarios. Tools, Scenarios, Select, Delete, Select, Delete, Select, Delete, and Close. I'm going to go through that very quickly again, only this time I'm going to look at perhaps getting an interest values from different banks. Uh, perhaps we're looking at bonds. I'm going to put that back to 12. So we're looking at yearly bonds and look at different banks that will offer me different interest rates and different amounts of investment. So we'll have a look at this. Tools, Scenarios. Add a scenario. We'll put our starting point in. I'm going to change in this instance. Notice I can do uh, control click to select non-adjacent cells. But I'm actually going to select the... Um, interest rate and the number of payments. So I'm holding down the control key so I can adjust those two values and I could have typed that A, uh, A1 comma A3. Expand that up. So those are the two cells that I'm going to make changes to. Click OK. The first cell has picked up the starting value of 0 0.06, a percentage value. That's why it's shown like that. 6% means 6 divided by 100. 6 divided by 100. And it's picking up the minus 200 pounds. So there's our starting point. Click OK. Let's add a new one from an alternative bank. Still going to change these figures, A1 and A3. This alternative bank, though, is going to offer me 7%. Only will allow me to invest 150 pounds. So I'll click on OK. There's my two scenarios. My initial scenario, if I show tells me at 6%, £200 a month, I'll end up with £3,000. The alternative bank, select, show, I'll only get £2,400. If not, the interest rate is higher, I'm only allowed to make £150 a month. If we add one more, best bank. Still changing cells A1 and A3. Click on OK. What are the values? This bank is going to give me 10% return and will allow me to invest £200 a month. Click on OK. There's our three. Let's do a summary report, making sure that our results cell is being picked up correctly. And OK. And there's our answers. The alternative bank, I'll get two and a half thousands back. But at the best bank, giving me 10% interest, I can get three thousands back. Now remember, the really important thing is here, that although I was using a financial function there, it doesn't have to be. It can be any calculation you want. It can just be a simple addition. 